Agent Carter, Season 1, Episode 3, Thoughts. This episode is called Time and Tide. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. Another episode I love. The top link in description box will enable you to donate to the Say After Strikers. And then there are some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive into the episode. So, yeah. Um, someone is watching Peggy through the window. And, you know, we see the guy climbing the building and you know honestly the moment that we saw his fingers like grab on I thought they were gonna do one of those there's so many scenes in American media where like someone like tries stepping on the toes of someone who's like hanging on for dear life but Peggy holds him at gunpoint and yeah it does sound you know at first we too thought oh this is a spy an assassin but no, he was just one window away from the the girl that he wanted, <laughs> which is a great because like we were specifically told, you know, no men after some I don't know eleven or something, you know, and and yeah, and the thing that they also say later in the episode, no men above the first floor, something like that, you know. So yeah, this this was set up and. Let's see, yeah, and at breakfast they talk about the men in their lives and the, <laughs> I like the thing with, you know, Houdini, that's never good, which I think that might be the first time I've ever heard the name Houdini as, like, a negative. And, yeah, the one thing that Houdini could never do was climb the stairs. And the the woman is thrown out of the place because of breaking the rule about men there. And, yeah, we learn that supposedly, you know, the... the um, crap, what was his name? Um, yeah, the, the guy apparently died two years prior so yeah that's i i don't know how they managed to bring him back but i'm excited to find out and yeah um krasminski is like that was my thing that was my clue you know why don't i get to follow it up and you know Dooley is like do you have friends in russia and then jack adds or anywhere else <laughs> Let's see, and then we have the, yes, um, Peggy goes to see, um, yeah, to, to the, to the Stark estate to try to find out about the, the stolen stuff, which, you know, it was also clever, that, you know, Noah's impenetrable, which, yeah, there's the the you know somehow they managed to get into to Howard's vault, and then the SSR agents come knocking on the the what's it called? Um, I can't believe I'm playing. Uh, the the yeah, come come knocking on the the door and. Yeah, that's and and you know somehow Carter manages to to not get taken. You know, the once Jarvis follows them instead of letting them in, that does help with not. Uh, yeah, Let's see, and it was legitimately clever to to report the car as stolen. You know, and they do catch him. They they point out that's exactly what I would do if I knew that you know if I used my car in a crime. And then you know Jarvis points out you know this will be novel. I haven't been in the back of a car in years. And you know, I mean, you probably th thought he wouldn't get this far. 
And yeah, I like the thing with, you know, the death rays accounted for. It's in Nevada, I believe. And yeah, turns out that you know, he was accused of treason in in England, and yeah, you know, Jack points out, I can call immigration, and yeah, that's the kind of thing that could get you deported. At, at least then, you know, and, and you know, yeah, he's, he's like, you leave, your, you leave my wife's name out of your mouth. And I would pay money to see Jarvis, like, slap Jack Thompson. That would be funny. And I, you know, great, like, I always, I already really liked his performance, but, you know, when he's, like, confronted with the idea of immigration and the treason accusation and, and all this stuff, like, fantastic acting. And, yeah. Peggy manages to, to trick Dooley into, you know, yeah, signing, which means Jarvis is free, and we get some great knowing looks between Peggy and Jarvis, and yeah, you know, they, they yell at Peggy, and, you know, in this exact instance, you can, you can understand being frustrated, but then you also have, you know, Dooley specifically says, and you wonder why I never let you have any actual cases when, as far as we, the audience, know, this is the first time that she's made a mistake. But he's going to retroactively, you know, this is a comic property, so he's retconning as, oh, she's always making these mistakes. You know, which, like, how does she still have a job if... She's always making mistakes, you know, he's, and that is the kind of thing, you know, that the, in real life, you know, when, when, some, sometimes when powerful men get frustrated with women, suddenly they're, you know, they, they start blaming them for things that they didn't do and, and claiming all sorts of just, yeah. And... We have Angie upset at Peggy not having time for her, but you know we know you know Peggy has to go clear Howard of of treason charges. You know he has to get his bad babies back. This is dangerous, but she can't very well tell Angie that. So Angie is very upset, which is legitimately like sad for the audience she's, she's and she's such a sweetheart you know just yeah and they meet the new uh resident of of the place the the one taking over for the one who got kicked out dotty or dot and yeah i you know she seems a little too perfect i'm i'm guessing there's something with her because the the yeah I, I don't not not like a misogynistic I'm I'm saying I think the character is hiding something like maybe some kind of spy thing or you know it is it is interesting that she so quickly got to the and and you know apparently she like um she's like ba ballet something or other which you know the the um, there are applications for that level of of control of the body within you know the the, um, the field of spying so let's see and and yeah you know the the landlord not the butcher is like you know, oh, you know, I, I usually think of the, the, um, what's the word? Usually I think of dancers as being too irresponsible, but I do have a lot of respect for ballet, which, 
yeah, I mean, Summer Glau, Black Swan, there's a lot there to love. And let's see. Yeah, the the Peggy and Jarvis check for where the uh, what's it called? Um, yeah, the the where the weapons were taken out, and I cannot for the life of me figure out what I was trying to write there. Um. Oh, right, right, the, yeah, you know, all he needed was a raft and a forecast. Great dialogue on this show, and yeah, we learn about the the charge, you know, she was Jewish, still is, I'm pleased to say, you know, which, yeah, and, and just a forged signature, that's, even though it was in order to save someone, so... Yeah, it, it's great because the moment, you know, when we first heard it, you know, earlier in the episode that he had been charged with treason in England, yeah, it did sound like, okay, that's, you know, I'm starting to think, wait, was it England or was it after he already immigrated? Anyway, but yeah, you know, that, yeah, saving a, a Jewish person from the Holocaust, that's, a pretty major let's see and and yeah they they recognize the symbol on the the boat or ship I can never tell and <laughs> she gets out the gun and he's like do you have another one of those and and yeah as she puts it you're getting mighty confident <laughs> like that's no no Jarvis not no no gun for you not right now, at least. And, yeah, they, they do find all the, the bad babies, and Jarvis points out the various problems with uh, Carter revealing the... So, so yeah, that was very nicely done. And, you know, she points out... You know, she, li she thinks this might finally get them to respect her, and he points out, they won't respect you, they'll use it to tear you down. Which is sadly very true, and I, I very much enjoyed Jarvis's accent. You know, imitating someone from the U.S. Which the letters of U.S. is spells us. Wow, I should do more reading. I'll I'll realize all kinds of fantastic spelling. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down as soon as I stop recording, and the yeah excellent fight on on the boat, really great choreography and editing just yeah really there's a there's a visceral sense like it it feels like the punches hurt, and then the massage thing is used on his arm which holy crap that does look painful and I do quite like the thing you know the the um, that worked very nicely not if you want a massage and uh, yeah the the SSR people do indeed arrive and they spot the heartbreaker dream maker love taker you know it, it's a, a boat of many names and I have to admit, at first I was wondering why didn't they leave before the SS, you know, like, you know, Carter could have gone with him out to, to when he made the call and then they drive off together. I think the idea is that they didn't want to leave too long between, you know, other than the writers of the episode wanted there to be a fight, obviously. The, the... And, and, you know, they wanted to be on the boat, which is almost definitely a set, which is significantly easier to control than if it was on the pier and they have to deal with natural light and, you know, all the, all the water and, yeah, much more difficult to, so, you know. But I, I think the idea is they're like, whoever 
you know, there might be someone watching this boat. There might be someone, you know, who will, you know, we, we should make sure that no one is able to, like, sail this thing away from here before the SSR get here. They just weren't expecting there to also be this, this fight, which obviously risks them, risks her getting caught. And, yeah, you know, Krasminski says, who doesn't love Christmas? According to the opening of Ted 1, the Jewish kid in the neighborhood. And, let's see, yeah, and, and you know, Krasminski drives off with the, the guy, and I did honestly think, you know, oh, this is going to, you know, they're going to realize the car, as, as she points out, you know, we can't leave him, he's a witness, but, you know, he's only able to sell Chris Minsky, who then dies before he tells anyone else, and I appreciate that the episode actually, like, Chris Minsky hasn't been a positive character up to this point, but he was still a human being, you know, and he wasn't one of the bad guys that the show doesn't really treat the death of the bad guys as a bad thing, that's true of a lot of American media, but the, and I'm obviously using bad guys as just descriptive, I'm not saying, I, I don't believe that anybody's born evil, you, you can choose evil, you can choose good, and that choice, it's, it's much harder to choose good if you have very few resources, but, yeah, you know, I appreciate that they did actually have, you know, other characters be sad that, he died, and, you know, Sousa points out, you know, you can't help but wonder if one day, you know, one day that might be you, you know, dying an early death. When Peggy is headed in, and we see, like, some of the, the telephone ladies, like, crying, I did briefly think, how many, I, I know he has a wife and a girlfriend, how many else did he have? That these, just, so many of these women are, are so sad about it, but that's just me being cynical. And, yeah, you know, they have another, you know, Dooley's like, I'm gonna go call his wife. And then Thompson is like, I'll call his girlfriend. And the episode closes on Angie and Peggy. And the, the you know, I, I appreciate that, you know, at first Angie is being you know, standoffish with Peggy because she's still upset. She still feels rejected. But when she hears, you know, I, I had a really bad day, the, you know, then Angie is like, you know what, we, I'll, I'm, I'm here for you, kind of thing. And so, the, the yeah, I'm to be trivia for the episode. According to James Darcy, the scene in, who plays Jarvis, the scene in which Jarvis disguises his voice by speaking with an American accent was shot five different ways, ranging from a good American accent to a really bad one. Yeah. And the strongman on the boat, Jerome Zandau, is named after the character of a circus strongman who appeared in Captain America Comics number 5 in 1941. Bridget Regan modeled Dottie Underwood's wide-eyed persona on Judy Garland as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Which is also, you know, appropriate for the time, because that movie, the original Wizard of Oz movie, came out in 1939, which is why Cap understood that reference. And <laughs> the symbols on the first page of Section 3 in Peggy's Book of Symbols are Shadow Hunter runes from Cassandra Clare's The Mortal Instruments. And let's see. Yeah, so the, the, um, the alias is listed on the passports, but found by Ray Krasminski in a seat cushion are references to famous filmmakers from the passports' respective countries. Alfred Lean. The UK passport is based on Alfred Hitchcock and David Lean, Orson Hawks on the US passport, Orson Welles and Howard Hawks, Federico Rossellini on the Italian passport is Federico Fellini, and Roberto Rossellini. This explains Roger Dooley's response, got a film buff on our hands. Yeah, very nicely done. You know, it's just, it's, 
it's three names set in a short, you know, because, like, those names could be anything. You just needed, you know, they, they just, they were making the point that this is a guy who has multiple passports from multiple different countries. He is, you know, this is, this is professional. This is not, you know, oh, I don't know, they, they found someone, you know, the, the, yeah, this is this is a professional who who has access to to this sort of thing, but they bothered to make all three names references to to directors. So that's yeah, very nicely done, and you know also like I let's see, I have to admit I'm not 100% certain. Let's see, David Lean. Right, yes. Oh, wow. RIP. I I guess I I think I I think all six might be be dead. That's right. Lawrence of Arabia director, which, you know, I wish that movie had more empathy for Muslims and that it was like, you know, oh hey, white people can make a movie about Muslims without a white guy being the lead. And yes, I am aware that you know, historical, like, there there was a, a, uh, T.E. Lawrence actually did exist, uh, you know, but the, the, but, but, yeah, I, you know, I, I rewatched it just recently, phenomenal movie, um, let's see, yeah, um, and, but, but, yeah, all, Incredibly talented uh, directors, um, you know, really, really love the work of, of especially Hitchcock, Orson Welles, and what I've seen of Fellini. I, I have not watched all of it, but I would very much like to. And that is... Right, I like... Mr. Stark believes that the intruder had some advanced technological assistance. Mr. Stark believes brushing your teeth requires advanced technological assistance. And a trustworthy shark in a sufficiently short skirt. There's an image. I, yeah, hadn't, hadn't, I wasn't picturing that before I watched this episode, but, yeah. And... Let's see, I think that might be about what I have to say about this episode. Um, I feel like, hmm, was there maybe one? Right, uh, yeah, um, I... I, I quite liked, you know, Krasminski trying to, to intimidate the, the, the witness. You know, uh, I don't envy you, buddy. My pal Jack has got a special gift for interrogations. He's real convincing. Gets guys to spill their guts. That's not an expression. You gotta use a mop. 